All right, hi. My name is Noel McKay, and uh, my publisher was telling me that I should be documenting all this stuff with this guitar restoration that I've been, I've been doing. So uh, I'm going to try to do exactly that uh, right now. So what this is is a little parlor guitar that I found at a yard sale in West Nashville at a, at a church a few years ago. And it just sort of... It, didn't pay very much for it because it was really in a state of disrepair. And it really, really looks like it's in a state of disrepair now. But um, let's see. So the back was all cracked. As you can see, it's cracked here. But um, after the quarantine happened, it, it, was, it just seemed like the kind of thing that I should maybe dig and delve into. So uh, what I did was the first thing I, I got this back off. I tried to get it off in one piece, but it was really fairly hopeless. And and uh, and so I, I did not. The back came off uh, in four different pieces, but that really isn't a big deal because the reason it's split like this is that it, it's oddly two different kinds of wood. So on this side, it's spruce, probably the same batch of spruce that the top is made from. And then it's a very, very thin veneer of some kind of New World uh, rosewood on the back. And it's very pretty, but it's also just not functional. It's too thin. So I got the neck off. The neck came off. The, the neck was a thing that I got off of it uh, initially uh, when it was first bought and found at the yard sale. So someone had taken a giant bolt screw and screwed it into the, uh, into the heel here through the fretboard and a couple of other things. So that this was really just not a functioning guitar when I bought it. And, uh, and the neck, there's, there are lots of weird things about this guitar that I'm really just not sure. You know, maybe some of my luthier friends, some of my friends who work on instruments like Warren Murphy or, uh, or Christina Vane or uh, uh, Neil Peterson can tell me more about this than I've figured out just staring at it. But um, I got the back off of it, and these are the back braces, and got those off um, just with a little knife and just a little gentle prying. And so what I've got here is these are, I've, I've rebraced it. So I, I took a knife, an old butter knife that I found at the Nashville flea market uh, that, that was right the right tool for this particular job, and I just got, I, I scored it and got underneath these old braces, and the old braces came out. Uh, so these are my X braces that I, this is not glued in yet. So I made my X braces out of some old spruce X bracing that I had laying around from a kit. I got these from Guy Clark, who with whom I built uh, the guitar that I play almost all the time. So these little braces here are made from the material that were, th these two braces that were here, I just turned them into these smaller braces. This thing was simultaneously overbraced and underbraced. So it, the braces, there weren't enough of them, but they were too thick. So I, I got them out of there, and unfortunately, I tried to score this and get the butter knife under there, but there was some tear out here. So what I intend to do is I intend to take some of this old spruce from here and just make a, just patch this and sand it down until it's flush, but I'm gonna take some glue and glue it in there and this, this tore out all the way back here. I'm gonna cleat that so that it doesn't create a crack because the crack will appear in the top on this side where the, it, it'll become a weak spot. So one of the things that whoever had this guitar did to it was they plugged all of these bridge pinholes with some kind of caulk. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. But they did, and so there was no bridge on this thing at all, except a floating one and this caulk. And so the floating bridge did some damage to this top. And uh, so it also, there was some cracking here, just you can see on this side that some cracking happened, and there was just some settling in over the last, this thing is probably 120 to 150 years old. But that's hard to say. Maybe, again, maybe some of my f friends that are luthiers can, can tell me what they really think the age of this instrument is. So another thing that's odd about it is that because we've got this ply, you would think that this is a fairly cheap guitar. 
but there are some things about it that, that are really good quality. This top, most, most specifically this piece of spruce that was the top, that is the top, is a very nice piece of wood. It's one solid piece of spruce. You can see it would have some kind of veneer on the back, but you can see on this sound hole here that there's not two pieces of wood plied together. It's one, it's a, it's a single piece of book matched spruce probably from a very long time ago. And you just can't get wood that's that good anymore. So it settled and a crack started to appear. Now that would, it, it's really just contained to the rosette here, but you really, you never know that might continue to spread all the way back here. And then you've got a lot of trouble. And then you're, you're really gonna be struggling to make this thing a functional instrument. So it, there was also some settling, who knows, maybe this thing got dropped and the neck jolted and broke this here. But what I did was I cleated it in the back here and the big crack here, I just stuck a big piece of, of Indian rosewood that was part of the guitar that I built with Guy Clark and just a leftover piece. And it's nice and thin, but it's also a lot, of, it's covering a lot of surface. This is not a place on the guitar where it where that's going to compromise the resonance of this top too much. So, and I tried to sand these cleats down. I might do a little more sanding than these cleats. Um, uh, let's see what else. Yeah, I'm just going to patch that. That's and that's basically. Let's see. Let's talk about this neck. This neck is another one of the sort of strange things about this guitar. I can't figure out the age of it. Uh, it doesn't appear to have any plastic that's part of it, uh, and that ages it older. The age of, of plastic, cellulose plastic, and all that stuff began in probably the 1920s. And so this thing precedes that. Uh, these butter bean tuners look like they are actually made of ivory which is, you know, kind of sad in a way, but it's also pretty cool because that means this was a really good quality instrument, maybe. I don't know, but this, another thing about it is that this headstock uh, was glued in. So if you look at a nice old Martin guitar and it's got a, or even a new one, and they've got the diamond on it, the diamond is kind of an homage to the years when they would take the headstock and glue it into the neck like this. So, this, so this, this piece is a stabilizing thing for that headstock. But another thing about this guitar that tells me that it was someone's really valued and prized instrument is that this headstock broke off like so many instruments do. Uh, you know, Gibsons are notoriously bad about that. Uh, and, and just falling off a guitar stand and then the, the neck will just snap. And that happened to this, but somebody just did a really very good job of repairing it, I'd say. You can see where it is and that, that, that the repair has kind of settled over however many decades it's been since that. That's been a lot of decades since that repair happened. Um, but yeah, this is the, they haven't done this thing with the headstock glued in that way in a really long time. So I'm guessing this is a really old instrument which ages all of this other stuff. And also I forgot to mention when I was talking about this, the top being a solid piece of spruce, that these these sides are also one solid piece of, of, of rosewood. I'm not sure what species of rosewood this is, but um, it, it's something nice and um, Another thing I'm gonna to have to do is these this kerfing here where there was a, was a hole. I'm gonna to have to kind of sand some of this extra material that's left over gingerly out of it with and, and try to compromise the thickness of this top as little as possible while getting this extraneous debris because this is still working against, it's, it's still working the cross direction. It's still even a little tiny bit of this, of this pine that it is, it's still gonna, prevent the resonance of this top just a tiny bit. So I've got to get that out, fix this kerfing. Um, I've notched the kerfing out where the braces go in uh, for the new bracing pattern that I've established. And I'm gonna have maybe do a little patch on top of that just to stabilize it that much more. And that's where I am. And then after that, I have to think about the back. You know, obviously I'm not gonna be able to go back on it with this back 
this back is destroyed and was when the guitar was purchased. So what, what I did was that there was an extra piece of Catalux uh, Mexican Royal Ivory back uh, that I got, that actually Brennan bought for a, a, a guitar. And this, uh, there's another piece of wood for the guitar I'm gonna build for her. That's, I'm gonna build that thing out of walnut, but this is Mexican, oil, Mexican Royal uh, Ebony which is also known as Catalox. And I'm gonna use this, you can see I've traced the pattern and, and I've actually just kind of fudged uh, this little thing for the, for the heel of the neck, uh, just in a sort of an old Spanish classical guitar style of, uh, of guitar building where the back has that, that, that is one of the things that glues to the neck. I'm, I may or may not go through with that. It depends on whether I'm gonna be able to facilitate a bolt-on neck on this thing or a mortise and tendon neck on it. We'll see. But this is a very nice piece of Catalox. And uh, we'll see, you know, I still have to book match that. One thing I'm planning on doing is if you look at uh, at the at the purfling, it's it's really a bunch of these little lined purfling here. It's not herringbone, it's it's this stuff. Mm -hmm. And the original back strip is on this back is that same kind of stuff, you know, it's it's that white brown, white brown. Uh, so I'm gonna see if I can get a hold of some of that stuff. And therefore I intend to make uh, the back strip just be very, very thin and not the regular old herringbone backstrip like the one that I did for the guitar that I pulled, the, the, the first one that I built. And that will minimize the cover up of this nice light wood strip that's coming with this piece of catalog, uh Mexican Royal Light Ebony. I'm really gonna have to plane this thing down because it's awfully thick. So anyway, that's it. That's where I am with this uh, instrument. And thanks for paying attention. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, stay tuned.